All right, music fans, welcome. It is the harmless one yet again. Although some people are telling me to, you know, stop calling yourself the harmless one because you're not. You're harming everybody. All right, well, I'm just telling it like it is, or, you know, I'm giving my opinion and I'm doing it in real time for a few real people. Um, but that's about it. That's all I'm trying to do here. Uh, this isn't rocket science. Uh, I am not a political pundit, although now I'm starting uh, to pretend to be one here on this channel, which started as just a music channel, and <clears throat> or at least me talking about music. I don't play music, right? I don't play an instrument. Of course, you get criticized for that. Well, you know nothing about music because you don't play an instrument, and I know nothing about politics because I'm not currently a politician. <laughs> Politicians aren't very well liked, and uh, many of them know nothing about politics. Let's just put it that way. So there's a battle uh, going on. It's a culture war, and you've got a guy like Aaron Lewis, who if you don't know who Aaron Lewis is, he's um, the lead vocalist for the band Stained, um, who I am not really that fond of, but I understand that some people are. And he is also a country music solo artist, and he released a very controversial song, supposedly very controversial song, back on July 2nd called Am I the Only One? Now, I've listened to this song, and I got to tell you, um, the lyrics really hit home with me. Um, there's some hardcore profanity in there, um, but still, I understand where he's coming from. There's an anger, there's a frustration. Um, and this is the divide between a guy like Aaron Lewis and a guy like, I don't know, Sebastian Bach or Dee Snyder. Um, by the way, the latter two don't have the same kind of impact or influence that an Aaron Lewis has. Aaron Lewis, not only is he in a very hardcore mainstream rock band, which, by the way, is more of the mainstream realizes that Lewis is not on their team there's a likelihood that Stained isn't very successful anymore, that they kind of go down the tubes because it's the same with Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton is being othered. Uh, every bad thing that Eric Clapton ever said is, is aired out there because now he's you know basically an enemy of those who, who think the status quo is working, right? That's pretty much what this is about. Or there are a bunch of people out there that are so invested in this that if they're wrong, they will not admit it. They will never admit that they're wrong. They'll do some kind of kabuki dance around it um, and say, oh, it was Donald Trump's fault or something. I don't know. And again, I'm not, as, as far as a Trump fan, I, I mean, is he better than what we currently have? Yes. Yes. I'm just going to say it out loud. But there are a lot of things that, that he did that kind of set everything up and people have to come to terms with that. I think the people who are, I mean, we're in, a lot of people are into cults, right? Cult of personality rather than what does this person stand for, right? Um, this person's going to save us, whether it's the short little emperor whose opinions really you know, you need a second or third opinion when you're when you're talking about him. Um, and with Trump, um, it's the same thing. People think he's going to ride in on the white horse, or you know, the Trump air ship or whatever he's got. Um, he's still worth probably a few billion dollars, right? Um, and he's going to save the day. Um, no one's going to save the day but us. We are going to have to save the day. We are going to have to figure out how to truly coexist. I know um, that's a slogan from years ago, but it's it's basically com it comes from one side of the political spectrum that doesn't like the other side and basically is is signaling virtue signaling to them, saying you need to coexist, meaning you need to change and be like us. That's what that means, and a lot of people don't see that. So when Aaron Lewis gets all outspoken and in your face and dropping F-bombs and he thinks he's the only one because he's trying to sort of awaken people 
to the idea that things don't have to be this way. And he's outspoken and he's impactful. And those other guys are like, they're throwing rocks at windows, basically. When I hear like Dee Snyder with his influence and imprint or a guy like um, Sebastian Bach or any number of these artists um, who just say things that are tribal, they don't, they don't really examine someone else's opinions. They just spout off. And, and Gene Simmons, I think, said, hey, if a few of these people kick the bucket who aren't doing what I'm telling them to do, who cares about them? And see, that's the difference between now and, and Gene is like in his 70s, so he should really kind of know better. But I don't know if it's an age thing. I don't know if it is a brainwashing thing. I don't know if it's about ideology and not showing yourself to be connected with somebody who supposedly is hated within the media complex, right? Because as soon as you do that, then your revenue stream is probably going to drop. As soon as you go out on a limb, and I did a video about this, by the way, as soon as you start talking honestly and truthfully, and you get off the mindless entertainment bandwagon, all right? And it is. A lot of this is mindless stuff. A lot of people want to know about it, and I understand that, and hence, I will continue to produce content that covers those things when they're relevant and when they're interesting. But when nothing is going on that's truly interesting within the music business, right now, the biggest topic is freedom, tyranny, liberty, you know, the ability, and this does relate to the concert industry, as I did a little video yesterday, people are showing up at concerts, and they're just they're saying, nope, I'm not doing these protocols, but I'm here. And, you know, they're letting people through. They're moving them through the turnstiles. Come on in. So I find it interesting that, you know, this guy gets critiqued hard, Aaron Lewis. He gets critiqued hard by everybody. And his views are deemed as controversial, right? But nobody says the same thing about Sebastian Bach or Dee Snyder or Gene Simmons or Paul Stanley when they spout off about something. Their views are never, the media doesn't write the headline, controversial statement by Sebastian Bach, right? No. And you can, you know, from the real cynical side of things, you could say, well, that's because these guys are just trying to stay in the news. These guys who aren't as relevant, like Aaron Lewis, I think his song went to number one on the country charts, right? And it's a very traditional old school like Hank Williams the third kind of country. It's in your face. It's bold. It just doesn't care if you like it or not. But there are a group of people who want to hear authenticity in everything, in every medium, whether it's music or movies or art or college they want authenticity when i say college i guess i mean education rather than just teaching to a test or um taking classes that will run your education debt to a hundred thousand and then when you get out you got nothing and you're hoping somebody will pay off your student loans right this is where we are in america today and i know people don't appreciate these rants i don't appreciate a lot of times when people rant as well. And what I do is I listen to it maybe for a while and then maybe I find something else to do. And I've said to people all along on this channel, even when I was just critiquing certain people in bands saying X, Y, and Z about their abilities, people would say, well, can't you say something nice about so-and-so? I'm like, well, I like them as a person most of the time, most of the time, but if they're not able to still do what they used to do, then it might be time for retirement or it might be time for the band to replace them. And people don't take well to that, especially again, this has to do with being invested into something and not admitting that things have changed, whether it's aging, whether it's whatever reason that changes the finished product of something. And this relates again back to current issues, because if you find out that you're wrong 
and no one will ever admit they're wrong. They just keep moving the goalposts. And I made these comments on many videos where they said, this would happen if you do this, but it didn't happen. So now what's next? Well, we say, well, at least it does this, this, and this. But see that again, misses the original point, you know, operation warp speed, right? That was supposed to just be stupendous and tremendous and amazing. And that I can tell you, and it's going to be great. And see, this is why my trust for anybody right now is, is down near the bottom. If you're trusting some agency over your local primary care professional, if you're, if you're trusting in that agency, or if that so-called professional is just following a flow chart, we're in deep trouble. And then you need to go find someone else to talk to. And if that person's doing the same thing, and then the next person, and the next person, and they say, well, this is all settled. This is all settled. This is what we do. This is what we believe. We all do this. And to me, we're, and there's no intellectual curiosity. There, there's no kind of coming to the realization that your point of view might have a flaw or two in it. The interview Joe Rogan did with Sanjay Gupta, very important interview, very important because it's like reality. Joe Rogan's all about reality and Sanjay Gupta is like, hey, I work for this channel. This is what they do. I don't necessarily agree what they do, but I go along with it so I can get a huge paycheck, right? That's, that's what this becomes. And whether it's protocols, mandates, you know, Medicare, whatever it is, it all comes down to doing what the man tells you to do and you just do it. And this is why I think um, people like Sebastian Bach and especially Dee Snyder, who supposedly went up against the man back in the day. And he's all preaching what the man's preaching now. And you're like, where did that spirit of rebellion go? And you don't have to be, you know, way over on one side of the political spectrum to be rebellious. You just have to be inquisitive and be an equal opportunity offender. People from the left, people on the right, whoever, wherever it is, if you're not inquisitive, if you just have this lack of, what's the word I'm looking for? Just like you, you just, your brain has already decided and you're, you're gonna, you're gonna defend that hill no matter what, even if the water's coming up the hill and it looks as though the hill's about to get wiped out, you're just gonna stay there and, and you're gonna look really foolish at the very end of it all um, because you've committed to something that doesn't have any foundation whatsoever. So um, I've said a lot here. Some of it made sense. Some of it was pure rambling. Um, but there is a big difference between a guy like Aaron Lewis and his impact versus a guy like Sebastian Bach or Dee Snyder and their impact. Aaron Lewis is reaching millions of people who are very much engaged in country music right now. And people who like, I guess, the mainstream rock scene to some degree. Uh, they will put Aaron Lewis and Stained together. But what's more important is that the guy is speaking from the heart, speaking, I believe, a lot of truth. And whether you agree with his message or not, you should accept him as a person who's got their own critical, independent belief system. And if we don't hold on to critical, independent thought, then there's no point of me talking about music or anything for that matter, because it's all just, it's all entertainment fluff. You know, yes, you can do both. You can enjoy entertainment and you can hear somebody talk about serious topics. If you wanna be distracted, you should probably just go listen to music and not me, right? Music will be the answer. Music for me, quite honestly, during this particular time in the history of the world, music is more important than ever to me. It's comfort and it's a way for me to decompress and just get away from it. But I think 
If you're constantly doing that and you're not engaged in what's happening around you, a lot of people are going to suffer because so few people got engaged and said, ah, that's, that's not for me. That's too controversial. That's too difficult. I wish they would just not talk about that. It's not as bad as they say it is. Just do what people tell you to do. And we would be over this by now. That's what they're going to keep telling you. And then they're going to keep moving the goalposts when that doesn't happen because they've already done it. And in these other countries where things have not gone all that well, and they had more compliance and, and more restrictions, and people aren't taking notice of that, and it's not being reported, and you sit there and you think, I'm just going to do what they tell me to do, even though it's not working. Okay. All right. Well, in any event, that's my video today. Thanks for um, watching. Um, if you're a new viewer, um, I'm going to ask you if you could do a dollar a month via Patreon. Because again, as I said in the prior video, uh, it's not helping me financially to do this the way I'm doing it right now. Uh, I am picking up subscribers and they are watching the videos uh, at a slightly higher rate than before. But I really depend on Patreon and patrons to make up some of the shortfall, especially during the um, a quieter times where the algorithm isn't algorithming. I don't think that's really a word, but I just made it up. So if uh, you'd like to donate a dollar a month, I'd really appreciate it. You know, I'll definitely give you a shout out message back if you um, decide you want to be a part of this. If not, I understand. There are a lot of people who've lost their jobs and don't have um, a consistent income. And I totally get that. But if you can do a dollar a month, that would be really helpful. All right. Uh, went again way too long here, but thanks for watching. And I will see you all very soon.